What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Run It Up. Very special day today. I have my good friend Antonio Esfandiari in here with us. What's going on? How are you? What's up, Mr. Somerville? I'm just glad to have made the cut the first time. It's a pleasure to be invited back. That means that I must have done something right. That's right. That's right. It's a pleasure to be here. I hear you're doing very good things with Run It Up. I'm trying my I'm best. I'm proud of you and uh, good for you. Wow, that's very sweet. I should just end right there because it really can't be any better than that, right? Yeah, like, no, no. <laughs> yeah that was very sweet of you to say all those things. Sometimes you know? I break down. I just got back from Burning Man, so I'm very in tune with my emotional, vulnerable side so maybe the, the love is coming out a little too strong do you always feel like early september is like the best time to ask you for things because you're right after right after burning man you're always just a little bit more flexible ready to go um it's interesting because i actually do find myself becoming a better person every time i leave burning man wow that's awesome can we punish this guy here? we can definitely punish this guy here okay. i'm gonna just call we could of raise course. of course you know but all right let's see a i flop. think it's a no-brainer call nice i like that Pretty good flop for us, all things considered. With Asi, we're probably gonna, we probably have the best hand here, more likely than not, right? Would you agree with that? I would definitely not fold. I would definitely not fold either. Three straight flush and an overcard, certainly gonna appeal. Let's see what the turn card brings. Don't know this guy at all. Never saw him before in my life. That is not a fun turn card at all. I think if he bets here twice, if he bets here more than like 450, I'm probably gonna just fold. You know, this is a card he could definitely be bluffing us on if he has like Jack 10, Queen 10, Diamonds. You know, there are definitely some hands that can bet here twice that are better or worse than Ace High. But I don't think with a guy we've never seen before we can peel here twice. Are you ever peeling here again on the turn? Sometimes. Some against uh, some people. Sometimes, like against you, I'm calling all the time. <laughs> just right. Just shove it up your ass. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But here, I think we'll just let it go. It. Yeah, Good long -term I plan. I agree with that. We got to start out, you know, standard, and then we can deviate by by the end. You know, we can finally get in there. So, so how was Burning Man? Tell me, I've never actually been still, but every year that you go, I feel like you convince me a little bit closer to me actually pulling the trigger and going. Uh, well, I mean, every year it's incredible, and I can say that after four years, it l literally just keeps getting better and better. Nice. And this was definitely the best one for me. I had a top three day experience in my life there. Wow, that's pretty strong. On the last day on Saturday when they burned the man. Um, the actual man actually gets burned, yeah, I guess, at that I point. I went Is from 4.30 p.m. until uh, the next day noon. I was the last <laughs> man standing in a wow. camp of like 60. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. And I was just I was just in heaven. I was so at peace. I, I was at one with nature and people and love, and it was just a very special. That sounds very amazing. Special experience for what me. what gets what changes every year? Like how you say it gets better every year? Is it just well, our camp has grown? So okay. you know, Burning Man is not a vacation by any means. It's very tough conditions. Right, uh, right. Very cold at night. Very hot during the day. It's dusty. The second you walk out of your shower in the RV, it's just it's, you just get dusty. You can't avoid being dirty. Right, right. So you know the first year. I actually couldn't take it. I left after two days. I oh, couldn't really? take being dirty and dusty. Mm. I was a total prima donna. <laughs> right, and right. I spent the whole year regretting it. And <laughs> right. so I decided, ooh, 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 ooh that's ooh, it. Ooh. Oh, nice. Let's, uh, let's make buzz. it. That's it. <laughs> let's make it four and a quarter. Let's do it. Oh, snap, you know snap call out of the big blind. No, I don't know. I actually don't think I know any of these players somehow. We are playing at a time that is not yeah. usually a time that I play, but so pretty not great flop for us, especially when the, when the big blind cold calls. When he bets out $1.50, there's no way we can fold getting 10 to 1, obviously. Could arguably raise, but I feel like when you're raising the spot, this guy is just going to call, and, you know, we're not going to well, I mean, up. he probably has 7s or 8s or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I was thinking it's more like Jack somewhere like that, but I guess it's that hand he, possibly would raise. I think Jack would be tough to bet $1.50 into that flop. <laughs> uh, well, no matter what he is betting, it's a little something that's uh, inc unconventional to some degree, right? And I guess now we just fold. I don't think there was really much else we could have done there. I hope we see a call. I really want to... Oh. Oh. Damn it. Yeah, so he didn't have jacks. Yeah, or didn't sevens, have jacks probably. or probably sevens either. Yeah. yeah, considering he just check and snap folded. I think uh, the yeah. only problem with calling is it's just so weak. Like it's clear that we just have nothing. Sure, but, sure. I mean, we're getting the right odds, so sure, it can't be too bad. And I feel like I do call there sometimes with like kings and queens, jacks. Sometimes you know, once in a while I'll call right, there. That's but your style. Yeah, sometimes I do call there. That's I don't think style. you call there very no, often. No. <laughs> it's not my style. Yeah, not, not Everybody's exactly. Everybody's got a style. Yeah, exactly. It's not my style. We didn't become friends until later on in life, but you definitely have a, a real amazing ability 
ability to like put people in a vice preflop that I think is like probably from we have played together a lot in the last few years and you are very very successful at putting people in uncomfortable situations preflop and postflop which I think is would you agree that is how you make the majority of your money in tournaments at least yeah I mean look I know that when I'm in a tight spot it's just gross and so right. I just, you know, see what all these little wizards do and I try and do it. But I add my own little twist to it. That's, that's you know, right. If you put somebody to the test, like, you know, Dole Brunson said it best in his book. And he said, you know, the, the best thing, the best way to win in Nolan Maholam is to put somebody to a test for their whole stack. Right. And, you know, in tournaments, once you put your whole stack at risk, that's it. Your whole tournament could be over at any second. So you just got to put people to the test. All right. And uh, sometimes you have it. Sometimes, Sometimes you, don't. you don't. Most of the time you don't. Most of the time you don't. <laughs> That's right. It's hard to have it. That's right. So, so tell me a little bit about how your poker life has been going in the last six months. I feel like we haven't really hung out or anything. I don't know if you've been playing a lot. Have you been mostly? Uh, no, I had a really bad World Series. Um, I got sick the first week, so I missed a bunch of events. All right. And then uh, I just couldn't get anything going. And then you know I took a few days off. Totally got. I regrouped for the one drop. Nice. And uh, was so ready for that tournament. You I know. saw you. You were focused for that tournament. Was, you were ready to go. I was so good. And then all of a sudden, in the last, you know, this one last round, when we were pushing the final table on the bubble, I was chip leader with 10 people left, and I took 10th. I mean, yeah. it was just like... Nightmare situation. It yeah. was so disgusting. And, you know, I played two hands bad, and I think that Tobias really, uh, he got to me emotionally, and I'm not an emotional player at all. Right. But uh, I made a couple of mistakes. And I learned from them, but it took me a long time to get over that. Like I, a long time. I, I heard a story that you like didn't leave bed for like two or three days yeah, after you I was busted. Miserable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could have done something that'll never be done. I mean, it was just like yeah, an right. opportunity to be yeah the guy, <laughs> the guy, <laughs> literally. Yeah. And I just I had it right at the tip of my fingers, and I just let it slip. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. What I, I have a whole bunch of questions about about oh, the one drop stuff. So when you went back and saw the the replay on ESPN, I haven't recently, watched any of it. Oh, you haven't seen I any, can't of, watch it. any of it. It's oh, interesting. interesting. I tell was, me, please do tell me. I, I well, there were some interesting hands, but I didn't think there were anything that was that interesting that you were involved in. There were like the most interesting hands were involving like Scott and Tobias and like you know I. Is it the final table? They, I, I didn't watch any of that. They did the whole thing though. I think they started with like on day right, two. So right. uh, you're in there a lot, obviously, but. Uh, I don't think I think from what I remember, I don't remember you playing any hands that were like mind blowing either either direction. No, um, my biggest mistake was the Ace Nine versus Tobias, and I is I, that your bust out hand? No, I mean it was a hand that crippled me. Crippled you. But yeah. I decided I was going to play the hand. It was five handed, and I knew that Tobias was going to raise the button. So I looked down at Ace Nine Diamonds and said, "Well, if he raises here, I'm going. With I'm going to go with it, right?" And you know you can't decide to play a hand before the action unfolds. So sure. he raised. I re raised, and then he moved in. Right. Well, <laughs> you know, maybe I should rethink the hand, and I had decided beforehand, and that's kind of like a Mike Mattisall move. Right. When you decide what you're going to do before the action unfolds, and I never do that. And yeah. I got caught up in the moment, and I let my emotions get to me. So you think you could have folded that or played it or just, I mean, yeah, I could have just flatted in a small Just flatted, yeah, to you know, begin with, right. Given the stack sizes, the fact that we're on the bubble, why would I put myself in that spot? If he moves in, now I'm in a really bad spot. Right, right, with 10 left. Yeah, and, and it was I didn't do that. Eight paying, right? So, eight yeah, paying, that's, yeah, that's so brutal. It was so brutal. brutal. I mean, uh, yeah, that's a hard thing to 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 get over, I'm sure. But oh, it was tough. I actually didn't get over it until Burning Man. I let it go there. Yeah, that makes said sense. Goodbye. Say goodbye. <laughs> I said, I said that's goodbye. a great time to say goodbye to things, though. Yeah. I feel like you know, I think so. But you live and learn. What can you do? What What were your thoughts, obviously, because the only person to compare to f from this year's champion is you, obviously, who took an entirely different approach to media and things as Dan Coleman did. You know, did you have any thoughts as far as you know what his approach was, how you would have approached things a little differently? I mean, well, anything. I mean, uh, I like mean, that? I, obviously, I would approach things differently. You saw what I did. Of course, of course. Know, you know, I, I look to each his own. Um, are you going to get there or no? Um, I always get there, bud. You always get there. Right? <laughs> like ninety percent chance I'm going to get there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm different. I, I, I think you're going to backdoor. I might get there through the old queen ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very possible. Very possible. Backdoor Willie. Let's do it. Let's do it. Little queen ball. I could just fold too. Oh, okay. Okay, I still might have got there. It's still possible. I think there's a chance. But I don't. I don't think. I think a value bet is a little light here. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Cold. He's gonna have like Ace Four too often and just yeah. not fold something like that. 
Ooh. Could have gone to value. <laughs> dollar, dollar 21 profit right there. See, we did get there. We just didn't know. We got there in the most narrow way possible. Well, the queen would have been nice. Yeah, the queen would have been uh, profit. So anyway, so listen, uh, I, you know, everybody gave Dan Coleman a lot of a lot of heat. Yeah. Um, I don't think he owes anybody anything. Of course. Uh, but I think that for the nature of the game that he's able to live this life and make this, you know, living the way he does and travel and do all these amazing things absorb all those experiences yeah i think that yeah i think that there's a level of like you know trying to do good for poker right with winning that tournament and i don't think he did any of that does he owe it to anybody no but is it the right thing to do yes interesting that's what i think interesting um do you know dan personally at all yeah oh, you have hung yeah. out a couple times. i like dan coleman he's a super nice kid and i think he's super talented yeah. Um, clearly, clearly, he's on an amazing heater. Amazing, <laughs> amazing heater this year, just can't stop winning. I uh, lived here. Win. I would actually like to hear your your thoughts about my general strategies out of the small blind. In the last year, I've been mostly just limping out of the small blind, like open completing. Like if it folds to me in the small blind, just completing. And uh, I feel like sometimes maybe I make some mistakes, but I feel like generally what has happened is uh, I play much smaller pots out of the small blind. I still win my fair share of pots against the big blind because the big blinds typically, if they don't, it's not a strategy that they see very often. So I feel like I don't get exploited too much. And I just limp with like 98% of hands in most cases. Well, and I really think it's important who's in the big blind. Of course, you know what I mean? of course. Like if of you course. have a good player in the big blind, you're limping a lot in the small blind. I think you're just going to get punished. Sure, limping like 8-3 is asking to get destroyed yeah. when we, when I mean, we uh, see that happen. I don't know. Like, if, if you have 8-3 offsuit, right. I mean, I, I just I would just fold yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Like, we why can even fold. get involved? Sure, you know? it's just not going to be a profitable situation. Yeah, I, mean, I just hate playing out of position. So, you know, I would just fold 8-3, but... You know, eight six. Of course, I'm gonna call. Right. So just a little bit, a little bit better of the right. slider there. Plus, yeah. Going back to who's in the big blind. You know, if it's someone that's just gonna call your raise all the time. Right. Then you might as well just I, play smaller. Might pots. as well just play a smaller pot out of position. Right. So makes sense to me. Yeah. Makes sense. I to mean, me. I actually like the ace four because your hand is. Un, you know, what are you gonna do? You know, raise. He raises now. What? Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna call and hope we find an ace. Miss, then, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a really hard situation from there for sure. Gonna raise it up here with king three suited. I love opening my suited kings from pretty much anywhere these days so <laughs> you know you don't really appreciate a good suited king until you're older you're any position with the king suited a, a six-handed table you know five-handed you can pretty much do whatever you want i think gonna uh, not every position I, but I feel a triple barrel coming your way yeah, we, all we gotta turn is a king a three a ten a jack a spade I was you just, to, see what <laughs> just to keep firing yeah that's right who who are you learning from these days for your poker training because i don't i don't know if you're spending a lot of time trying to improve your own poker game but i think you've in the past mostly absorbed from those around you is that still mostly what's happening uh no i am uh i haven't really i'm not one to really study so much sure but I where just, who are you learning I, from or is there anybody you're even really talking no, hands I mean, with? I, I took. Uh, there's a couple guys I talked to, like Brian Rast. And yeah, who's one of the best? Yeah, he's a beast. But uh, you know, after the World Series, I usually take a couple months off, and especially after this World Series, I needed I needed a complete regroup. Right. So I'll get back in the mix of things October and a for APAC. Nice. That's you gonna be exciting. A bracelet. That's exciting. What uh, you, last year you played a lot of the hundred Ks. You're playing the high roller circuit. Is that still gonna happen this year too? You think, or are you um, mostly away that? Probably not as much, just because, you know, I don't, I don't generally like to drift around and just chase this tournament high. Sure, sure. And given that Daniel passed me on the all-time money winning list, right, it's right. not really a, that important to me anymore. When I was sure. number one, Negreanu passed you, not yeah. Jan Coleman. Yeah, 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 right. When I was number one, I wanted to keep number one spot, but now that I'm number two, I don't have this, you know, super desire to get it back. How big is the gap? Do you know? I think it's three or four million. I'm not sure. Oh, it's that much. I wow. think so. Yeah. I mean, wow. he, he, you know, his second place win was pretty big. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, and by the way, that's another thing that's so sick is because you know, I was chip leader with like twenty million. He had three million. <laughs> oh know. my god! And then I don't cash, wow. and he goes to take second. <laughs> he goes to take second. It's just like tournament how poker. Even possible. You yeah. Know? Right. Tournament oh, it was poker. so tilting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, at least you're not clicking the mouse. Although I think I'm gonna, I would like you to. If you're about to take some, teach some lessons to the kids at home yourself. I would love to let Magic Antonio take the wheel for the run out of bank your money anytime. Well, ex yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anytime. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So today, or I guess last Wednesday, is actually a very exciting day for you. The debut of your new show. Well, it's Phil's new new show. Oh, you're not actually. Uh, it's not you and Phil. 
Well, it's Phil's show, but he lets me be in it with him. Oh, I see. Okay. How kind of him to yeah, let you do nice that. Yeah, yeah. He just invites you along for the yeah. ride. He, so, he told the people at Discovery, look, I'll do the show, but you got to bring my buddy Antonio. So that, I That's nice. He lets me have a pretty pretty good cameo in all the episodes. <laughs> that's yeah. very sweet of him. Hopefully there's more episodes. That was just a, a one-time um, pilot to see, you know, how it was uh, viewed. Right, right. And how many people watch it and how many people want more. Right. You know, you got to understand that every every uh, series, the first episode is never really the one that capture, captivates. Sure, captures, sure, you know? yeah. It's just a teaser. It's the appetizer, right? Right. So there's character like... development. You know, the the poker, there wasn't that much poker in it. Right. Uh, there's maybe only two or three hands. Right. Uh, they were all real hands, by the way. Real poker games, real people. Oh, nice. That's um, awesome. So hopefully if the show gets picked up. What's the name of the show? On the Underground Poker. Underground Poker on Discovery, yeah. right? On Discovery, yeah. Nice. Then, uh, you know, hopefully if the show gets ordered, then we can get to work and, right, and right. really do some good stuff. Like nice. I would love to do. I would love to create more shows. Sure, sure, of course. I mean, I think I think uh, I bet you was one of the best pieces of like poker content, and I think it actually really kind of inspired me to do something that was poker related, but outside of poker. You know, because I think what you guys did with that was expand. You know, the general general like gambling lifestyle that we all know and love, and kind of do it in a different way. You kind of show like a different lens into the poker life and stuff. And I think that is what people really want to see. So I hope this all worked out for you. I hope so too. I had a lot of fun doing it. And <laughs> they did the production company. I mean, they 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 spent a pretty penny on the show. I mean, it's yeah. done professionally. Nice. It's done very well. Discovery tends to do things right. It seems like for the yeah, most part. Yeah, I mean, part, this wasn't so. some chop shop, you know. Right. Little thing they put together. They put a lot of. <laughs> this work is into a this. serious muscle there, right? Serious muscle. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it's full lock. Right. <laughs> it's gotta be. That's right. You don't mess around when it's full lock. I, uh, I, I, I don't know if Phil and I are are friends because I'm very hesitant to put that label on anything. But I got to hang out with Phil this summer for like a total scope of maybe like two and a half minutes, in which I think I said like three words, and Phil just like was like a stream of consciousness, just going off about how he just had this like amazing like wakeboard experience and he was floating and like it was like this crazy thing and because he had done that he was sure he was going to win money this summer and literally I just stood there and got this bombard <laughs> bombardment of energy he's the, <laughs> he's the best he's so unique I mean he, he deserves really is the greatest of all time I'm not just saying that he's so funny and he's so in tune with you know as as crazy and off balance as he may seem, he actually really knows what's going. It's on. very centered, really, right? It seems like yeah. it's, he's a. Uh, if there's all the people in the poker world that I could hang out with more often, I think Phil is like on the top of my list because he's just like so interesting and his energy is just so dynamic. It's just I don't know something really uh, really cool about that. How did you guys meet? He's very special. Um, back when the World Series of Poker was at the Horseshoe. Okay, long time ago. Uh, before Gus Hansen was Gus Hansen. Okay, way long time he was ago. Just a you know normal. Uh, mortal being Danish uh, beast yeah <laughs> uh, I used to do I, I was doing a lot of magic Let's see what he does here oh I knew he was gonna go for the three that's bet. right that's right for you especially I like it I think it's either three better fold for sure yeah I agree with that can make a 520 but it's fine five and a quarter let's see what GG oh, Upson re says to do pass. oh it'll be five dollars five dollars down the drain wouldn't be the first time we're gonna win this pre-flop pretty often i think and if he re-raises i think he's only re-raising with pretty top tier hands and otherwise we'll just make a cheeseburger no big deal cheeseburger is a cheeseburger che cheeseburger is a cheeseburger <laughs> when's the last time you ate just a regular like mcdonald's cheeseburger by the way gotta be a very long time ago oh my gosh uh mcdonald's cheeseburger yeah like 10 years probably. 10 years yeah i think I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't eat a, i actually wrote an article my last article was on how um, in bluff or where in bluff yeah i wrote about how fast food chains are just crushing the world as far as life expectancy oh crushing it negatively yeah correct right right i mean the hydrogenated oils and uh you know all the high fructose corn syrup they're putting into foods like your hamburger has sugar in it right you know? how, how did you get involved in all that nutrition I don't, learning I just, stuff? i just learned throughout time and you know, like 90%. I mean, this water that you gave me today, I don't want to say the brand because I don't want to get sued. <laughs> That's but this fine, brand yeah. of water, bottled water you think is good for you, is not. I mean, let me just read the ingredients here. <laughs> it shouldn't Magnesium, be ingredients. Magnesium sulfate, yeah. potassium chloride, and salt. I mean, how can they add that to your water? Why do they need to do that? Yeah, can I don't. you explain it to me? I could not explain it to well, you. No, I could not. So, I, yeah, big corps in America are just really bad. I, 
I uh, I certainly understand. Are you def- are you decided? Are you are you at all cur- uh, surprised that I defended here in the big blind with ten deuce suited? No, I mean did he open in the one hole and for one and a quarter. Yeah, so yeah, that seems fine. I think whatever. you know. I think making those plays, by the way, has long term value. But you not know, and people are less likely to go after you. Sure, and sure. bluff you. Right. So. I don't mind doing spewy things once in a while. You find that to be spewy though, because I think it's almost probably profitable, almost in a in a vacuum, right? You're putting in seventy five cents to win uh, two dollars, yeah, you so you're getting like bad hand, I think, at a position. Sh- sure, but what percentage if of the time? If you got min raised, I think it's a no brainer. But you got to. You, you got think two and a half makes that big of a difference? That your edge is really that 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 close? I think so. Hmm. It's interesting. I think it's spewy, but I'm not saying I wouldn't call. Sure, sure. It's, cer- it's certainly on the fringe of like looseness. Obviously, you know, yes. it doesn't get much worse than ten two suited. Correct. <laughs> you know, so you're really over there. Wow, this was a pretty quick all in by this guy. Old Wooster over there doesn't know what to do. Come on, Wooster. So you've been playing a lot in Ultimate in the last few months. Yeah, I mean, look, every day that I'm in Vegas, I play. I played nice. last night. Yes, I saw somebody tweeted me trying to get me in the PLO eight game. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. Ooh. yeah, that's it. So, but the, unfortunately, you know, we can only play when we're in Nevada or New Jersey. And sure, so right. I've been yeah, traveling a lot. Well, this is a perfect um, situation given that I just, just do this to this guy. Do Same exact sizing. Let's do it. Five and a quarter. Let's see if this guy is just sick of our nonsense over here. I would have three bet a little bit less in this spot. The only reason why I picked this size is because I just I did know, this to him. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. Maybe you would have made more money than I me. I would have just min raised or just flatted. You would have made like uh, four and a quarter or yeah, less? Like 375. Mm. Or four. You really would have flatted though given that we just no, raised? No. 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 Yeah, yeah, Given yeah. what just happened, I, I would have three bet for sure. Sure, sure, sure. Of course. Did you play that? Uh, did you play th- during the during the summer of the World Series events? Do you play anything outside of the World Series? Or are you only uh, playing at the Rio? No, I was playing at the Rio every day. You don't play cash or anything during the summer either, no, too, right? You mostly just not stay. Too much. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't play that much poker. It drives me crazy. Yeah. Go tournament, you know, and then get stuck in a cash game, play all night, then go back to the tournament the next day. Yeah, it's playing at 1500 or something, no less, where you have to, like, win to get even. Too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I definitely feel that same way. There were so many good cash games this summer, and this was the first summer that I had a place like across the street from where they were running, and I just couldn't do it. I was just was too exhausted every day and everything well, else going on. This going on. And yeah, yeah. Although I wasn't making. <laughs> you've got fans on yeah, Twitter. You don't look at me. Really doing it. I'm trying. I'm try- I got a fireplace on the wall. You, you got a fireplace <laughs> on the wall, guys. Yeah. I saw that and I yeah. wanted it. Yeah, Antonio literally said, "I want this," and I was like, "I'll give you mine off the wall right now." He, he didn't want. That. He didn't say that because if he said that, I would. Take it. <laughs> is it on the table? Is your offer on the table? Uh, you take it? I, I need this one. If, if okay, I, so don't say don't say about, you said it because you didn't. How about this? Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you this one if I buy a new one and you sign me a new one. Literally, like gold sharpie on I'm the wall. Get a new one, then why would I get yours? Because you're getting one that I used. It's a run it up studio set What's piece. <laughs> it's like it's like an artifact almost. Really. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair fair enough. Maybe later in life. Maybe. maybe later. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's all. That's all pretty exciting. So you're off to APAC as your next uh, as your next big stop, right? Mm-hmm. That's exciting. Is it 100k? I'm excited. I love there? Australia. No, I don't think so. I think that it's just uh, like a 25k. Oh, a 50 down there. 25 or 50. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But I am uh, really excited to go. I love Australia. I think it's probably my favorite city in the world is Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been back since I was like 18, but I'm looking forward to hopefully being able to do Aussie Millions this year. So I'm trying to stay free so i can do that yeah it's know. tough to do both aussie millions and apac because they're literally just a couple months away from each other yeah making that trip is a, twice is hard it's a journey man yeah yeah you know I mean, travel and uh comfort and comfort yeah I didn't yeah 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 you want to travel comfort it's like fifteen thousand a piece you know yeah it's yeah insane. i remember i remember when i was getting on the flight i just out of curiosity went to them and i was like what would it cost to upgrade to like first class or whatever and they were like it'll 10, be uh ten thousand yeah which is absurd yeah by the way like if like i ran an airline flight. company yeah well it's a 13 hour flight sure but sure. if i ran an airline company and someone's already paid for a coach or a business ticket right, right. And they're at the airport and the airplane's going anyway and it's empty and it's empty why would I? I mean, who's ever going to pay ten thousand dollars? Sure, no one, because they would have already booked first class. Right, right. So why wouldn't you sell upgrades to the airport for like twenty five hundred? Sure, 3, even 000? like three thousand. That's free money for the airline. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it seems like Qantas edges. is the worst airline in the world. You really think opinion. so? Wow, I, I've I mean, heard actually the opposite very often I from people Qantas. too. Hmm. I've always I enjoyed the flight, the Qantas flight. I've only been on the one, obviously, but I enjoyed the flight. But yeah, the look, the flight was okay. But nuts. as far as their prices and the way they, you know, want to charge you ten grand to upgrade to first class. Sure, tickets. sure, sure. They do it. Yeah, you know? they just own. Virgin the... Atlantic is amazing. Right. You go to the airport and you want to get upgraded. It's like 
twelve hundred bucks or something. All of Virgin stuff does that actually, because you you can book a regular flight and then just go there, and if there's a thing open, yeah. you just pay like half I mean, price. Why or wouldn't whatever. you? It's free money for the airline. Right, right, right. Makes right. a lot of sense. Richard Branson. There you go. Richard Branson knows what he's doing. If I had to come back in another life as a as an English guy, <laughs> uh, as an English guy be, specifically, he would be one. that's it. Have yeah. You guys ever hung, hung up before or anything like that? Ever no, met him? Never met him. No. Like, would love to, but. How, it's a little too big time for me. Can I? All right, I'm gonna guess. I've never talked about this before. I'm gonna guess that the number of billionaires that you have, can I say, hung out with, as in spend over an hour with in your life, is I'm gonna guess the number well, is. Let me get the number in my head. I know <laughs> the okay, okay. I like that you know because I know my number too. So <laughs> I like that we both keep track of those things. I, I mean, I have an approximate. Number. Yeah, sure. My my number my number for you is twelve. You're close. Very close. I think nice. it's nine. I think it's nine. I think nice. it's nine, possibly ten. I mean, you're talking about spent quality time with. Yeah, like an hour I've plus of like. Of them. Sure, sure. Like meeting Bill Clinton doesn't count as like you know actually well, like having a. a I know, I know, but as far as like yeah, ha- as far as being it. friends, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, You've done some good stuff with them though, as far as charity stuff though. Yeah, I'm yeah, actually yeah. hosting uh, the the Clinton Foundation does uh, a charity poker event. Oh, that's awesome. Year. And uh, the next one is November eighth. In New York, right? In California. Oh, in California. Yeah, I've done oh, one for awesome. them in New York with Lon, Lon, uh, Lon, Lon Karen. Nice. And uh, doing another one in November. And I did another one like a few months ago in L.A. That's so awesome. I raised a bunch of money, the Clinton Foundation, and uh, it's great. Bill yeah. Clinton is – I learned so much from him in the least amount of time spent with one person ever right. in my life. Wow. I've never seen anybody uh, walk into a room and make every single person feel important. You know, you know how I know that his impacted voice was you. Heard. Yeah, people's voices were heard. There was 250 people in the room, and he, everybody felt like they got a moment with him. That's amazing. And you know what's so funny is that you told me that right after that happened, and so you're still here, however long ago after that was, and you still think that's true. That is really powerful. He was he was really really in tuned. I mean, I've never seen anybody like it before. I think you said that he's his, super good. That yeah, ch- charismatic. I think you said that he has some sort of like charm, an allure, charisma. Was, he's got this yeah, thing that yeah. you just can't explain, man. Mm. It was really impressive. So yeah. So I'm doing that in on November eighth. Uh, ooh, you got to play a hand here, maybe. It's easy. I mean, he did flat you in the small blind. By he the way. did. That's true. So I'm very worried, but I can't fold just yet. I think. So if he bombs it on the turn, I feel like we'll at least consider holding. But I can't fold just yet. We right. can turn a ten, an eight, a jack, a six. You know. Ooh, there we go. Goes. <laughs> you gotta ask for the cards first. You have to go Time through to go them broke. otherwise. Yeah, I mean. Oh, <laughs> wow, that's a weird, uh, weird decision. You know, he, he could might definitely. Have his queen. He could definitely have a hand like that. He could have ace ten himself. Have. Could have a hand like, you know, like eight ten of eight ten. I don't think he has ace ten. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think he could have a set and just be shoving on turn just to protect his hand. I think that's possible. Right. A lot of players get scared in this spot and don't want to see a river because there's so many dangerous Ex- ones. So exactly. He could definitely have a set for sure. I think. And I think it's unlikely he has a big like king queen suited or something. Right. King queen of spades probably doesn't do this. No. So I actually think I'm gonna just fold as crazy as that is. I mean, he's only eighteen dollars in the pot and he's betting forty. So he's betting over 2x pot. And I feel like, you know, even though our equity is decent, I, I feel like too often he's going to have us just in, like, crush shape. And we too rarely have him in can bad I shape. Can buy the action? I mean, I wouldn't – I'd probably fold too, but I, can we just – You want to just buy it for $40? Yeah, I'll pay you $40 for the hand. Uh, Sure. Okay. I can do that. Cool. All right, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Ship it! <laughs> yes! Nice. woo <Nice. laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. So you owe me. I owe you uh, forty plus the pot, right? I I well. No, no, I paid you forty for the hand. For just the you owe me for just for his forty. Do you owe me for that or do you owe me for the? How? I know I make something. You know, so you <laughs> just just pay me whatever <laughs> I make. Pay I whatever. No okay. So, but what was the rest of the hand on for me or for you? I don't know. <laughs> well, I bought the hand. Yeah. Okay. I get that. Yeah. I get that. So, what does that mean for us, though? <laughs> I what, think you owe at me what point, sixty. At what point? What it feels like fifty-five. But whatever, we had to start the hand out, right? Because it's that doubled. Let's ask the most... people what they think. All right, we can ask people what they think. Yeah. That seems fine. So we started that hand with. Uh, we started that hand with 48, 40, 84. So you doubled up, basically, and won the blinds. Isn't that how that works, basically? You won the extra 150, and is that how that works? Or do you just right, win? You were going to fold and just lose 18 bucks. That's true. I was going to lose right. the 750. I was going to lose 9 bucks is what I was going to lose. So okay. I was going to. 
Yeah, because we're oh. in for 150 so and 750 I bought the hand for $40. So you bought the hand for 40 well, I bought the call or whatever. You bought the call for $40. 40 bucks for you. <laughs> That's right, yeah. So, so you paid 40 and then you won the pot. No? So you made yeah. $50. Yeah, that's I owe so you 50. That sounds about right. Yeah, because we're in for 40 We're in for 40 whatever minus what we lost. So I owe you like 50 Okay, so it's double or nothing for it. Double, okay, you got it. Let's just run it up. Let's just run, let's just run it up. Let's just run it up. We'll run it back is what it is, I guess. It's so <laughs> pure if I can take this 50 and turn it into it's 18, just, uh, <laughs> you know, a big flip, by the way. You know, that was one of the most fun things I think I've ever done in all of the casting stuff that I've done over the last like year and a half. I that think was most, a lot of fun. most people would say that, that that whole thing unraveled with literally like, we didn't plan that in advance. We no. literally were just sitting there playing the free roll. And that so just happened. For the, was it 36 or 18? Yeah, we flipped for 36 at the end. I won the one for eighteen, and we, uh, we were flipping yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. four thirty-six I when uh, thirty-six thousand. Yeah, off of a fr- off of a free roll in the middle of Taj Mahal in November. <laughs> the I most action that so Atlantic City has tilted. seen in years, years. I would have been so tilted. All right, so uh, we have to figure out what I'm actually in for at this <laughs> at this point, but uh, I think we have uh, fifty less than what this number is. So he bet out on uh, on. Uh, Flop, turn, and river. Don't think we can do anything besides pay it off if he has his beat. He has his beat. He does not. All right. So uh, I'm actually going to wrap this episode up for the time being, but you're going to stick around, though. We'll play another episode sure. at least. I'd love to have you uh, running run in the, the run it up machine okay, here start. for a little bit. So we'll play one more hand, and then we'll, we'll call it a, a session. And I think that we actually made $2.14. Regardless of having to pay you fifty, <laughs> everybody wins. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. We made a literal cheeseburger for the board over there. All right, very last hand. Let's see. All right, unexciting. All right, let's do a. Uh, you want to do a full screen wrap up with me? Here, look at this. Look how cool this is. Look at this. Look, see, full screen wrap up. That's it. Now we're full screened for the fence. Now we can wrap it up. How how nice is that? I think it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, if it's one of the greatest things Next you've morning, ever seen in your life, don't forget to uh, follow us here on Ultimate Poker's YouTube channel. You can subscribe here below. You can follow Antonio on Twitter, just Magic Antonio, right? That's okay. it, Magic Antonio. Fire him up a tweet, say thanks for coming on Run It Up, and we will see you guys back for more tomorrow with Antonio taking control of the Run It Up bankroll. Let's see. Let's bring, bring your seatbelts, boys. It's going to be a ride, I have a feeling. See you guys back for more tomorrow. Peace. I'm gonna say peace. Peace. <laughs> you could enter the pantheon of Dan or Demut. Let's, you learned the lesson then not to bluff me anymore though, so now it's all That's over. That's true, I stopped bluffing you. Do you know who busted me in my very first 100k? Trivia question for the fans at home, the answer is... Antonio. I did. <laughs> yeah, you did. One of the guys at the table said, is your show going to be as boring as your play here? Which is not very nice. And Antonio's response was, about the same. <laughs>